Uh, let's move on and see how the internet did react to the game yesterday. There was a tweet from the lane and back saying some deluded fans calling for Ange out. Seriously, uh, show some respect for what Ange has done so far in his first season. There was a quote retweet from KTHFC that says, out of both cups early, no Europe, refused to sit back versus Chelsea, costing us a likely draw, handled our injury crisis period worse than many managers would have. Uh, look at how has no plan B, can't coach with defence, refuses to sit back when needed. He's all talk and nothing else. And I think that's extremely harsh uh, for what for well, he what says. He look at how we're season. above Newcastle. What's he on about? Yeah, we are above Newcastle and quite considerably above Newcastle. Um, out both cups early. I think you can say that for the Fulham one uh, right mm. at the beginning of the season in this like third game in charge or something. Um, you can definitely throw that criticism on him. But like we went out for Man City in the other like the best team in the country and by the best team in Europe like anyone can lose to Man City on their day yeah I don't and people caveat and say oh yeah but we always give Man City a game like yeah and that's credit to the teams at that moment in time that's not a given that we go and beat Man City mm -hmm. 100% I think yeah that's probably the, the fairest criticism for him is how we've performed in the Cups because that, that has been a big frustration even I'll in that the, I would say the Carabao Cup not, uh, you can lose to Man City on any given day what I would say about that City performance is like I don't think we had a shot on, like all game did we like that was very frustrating but agreed like we lost to City you can't really blame him for losing City but I think the fact we were, and we went out of both cups really early considering we had no Europe was a big disappointment uh, to be honest and you expected at least, you know give the cups a good go and we couldn't we weren't able to do that so I guess that's, that's a bit of criticism but in terms of the other stuff I mean handling our injury crisis worse than man I would, I would say he handled the injury crisis better than most managers would have to be honest because we kept playing our football we still kept competitive in the top four race we didn't completely drop out of it look at United Newcastle and a lot of other teams who had ambitions of being in the top four and they completely fell off and, and lost um, lost their pace with uh, the top four because of injuries and stuff like that so I would say he actually did better than a lot of other managers with it um, can't coach a defence look yes we're open at the back the facts are, I think we have the fifth best defence in the league. You could argue... Is that right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, I think it's on 49 goals. Um, I think only the top three, um, Everton... Just the top three in Everton have a better defence than us. Uh, mm -hmm. We're level with uh, Villa. So... Um, Yes, we concede a lot, but clearly, I, whether you can say it's a Premier League where a lot of goals are being conceded or whatever, um, we have the fifth best defence. It's not exactly we're not apart, like tenth. Apart from Arsenal this season, like it's very hard for clean sheets to come by, isn't it? Yeah, Arsenal are the only team that are really doing it. It's not like we're sitting here in the bottom half of defence. We're fifth, so to say you can't coach defence, yes, uh, we can, we can definitely defend better. We got a long way to go to get to that top three. I agree with that, but to say we can't, he can't coach defence is very harsh. Uh, refuses to sit back when needed. Um, um, I think he's talking about the the Chelsea game as well. Like when we lost four one, and like the team got a standing ovation at the end of that game, losing four one. A few goals scored in the last minute of the game. I mean, we had nine men, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> it and was crazy. We had we had everyone playing on the halfway line, and I, and we nearly scored. We nearly got that game when Eric Dyer scored. He was a fraction fraction offside. And it, it wasn't even about the result. It's about what that game gave the team and gave um, and gave the fans as well. Decky spoke about it, didn't he, in his players' tribune? How much that game specifically meant to everyone because we got battered four one. Yet we stuck to our principles. We nearly got a result, and we it showed real belief in what Andrew's trying to do, and it really really helped the fans uh, really see what he's trying to do and it, helped, and it helped, gave that player's belief that uh, that the fans will stick by them as long as they stick to that way of playing. So I think that like the overall like um, uh, uh, positivity we got from that outweighed probably the negative result we got on the day. Yeah, you say that, but I mean, that game ruined our season. We went on after that game and lost three games, four games. That had nothing to do with us, us not playing high line. And that was to do with injuries and suspensions. It is to do with injuries and suspensions. And that, that goes back to what he says about being able to handle the injuries and suspension. But I mean, like, our, if, if, those, if these five games don't happen, like this stretch of games after the Chelsea game literally collapsed our season. If it wasn't Correct. for that, we would, we would probably be safely in the top four now. Correct. But and look, 
that um, things happen. Uh, what, what can you, you can't legislate for everything, and we've had these problems. But you can't say he hasn't handled the injury crisis because we're not safely in top four or challenging for a title. Because you look at other teams who are, had similar ambitions and have injuries as well, and yet we're well clear of them. So I think he's handled it fairly well. Mm. Um, Art But Make It Sport says that the assassination of St. Peter by Dominicio oh, 1618 another, another classic oh god um, so another art reimagined into the Spurs yesterday Van der Ven has been uh, done in this one unfortunately mm -hmm. um, poor guy but so creative these guys how they find these bloody pictures but anyway you are enthusiast, you. Um, Kieran says, enough is enough. Torp Hayes out. Uh, 100%. I, I cannot Get agree. Get this kit in the bin, oh seriously. Oh, my God. I'm I said Why it. Why did we even use it yesterday? I said it at the beginning of the season. This kit blends in with the crowd. And every time we bloody use it, we get battered and we play awful. I'm How telling you. How many have we used it this season? Um, Fulham in the Cup. Yeah, embarrassing good performance. Luton away. Just about got over the line against Luton. Um, and that was a Luton side that were getting battered week in, week out. Yeah, at the point. time. Um, uh, City away, we got a draw, to be fair. Brighton away, one of our worst performances of the season. And yesterday, I don't think we played it since Brighton. Mm. THSC <sighs> Matthew says, uh, one bad day at the office and you get the kind of hate Mickey van der Ven has been one of the most consistent and best players this season. And that won't change because of one game. We will come back stronger. And I agree with that. Mickey van der Ven has been absolutely sensational this season. And one bad game doesn't should not change anyone's opinion on him. I completely agree. But what all I would say is like people are acting like he's the one playing the bad back passes, if you know what I mean. He's not. It wasn't all down to him that those goals happened. But of, sure, of course, he had a bad game. No getting away from it. Well, he's had much better games this season. And he'll just have to chalk it down to one of those days for him. Chris Miller, Wendy Coy says um, it's year one. We lost our greatest ever player in the summer and he's currently got us uh, two, three places above what everyone predicted despite a period where we had no centre-backs and then lost three critical players for a month. No international duty, uh, sorry, two international duty. Di diabolical today, but no need to lose your minds. And I kind of do agree with that uh, to a certain extent. I mean, it's hard not to lose your mind when it's just like, exactly the same to what we saw last season the, uh, pretty much a year to the day uh, when we got embarrassed at St James's Park last time um, but I do agree with a lot of the statements that he has said I mean nobody thought we'd be in a top four race this mm. season losing Harry Kane more or less a completely new 11 try blend them in a new way of playing football as well getting back on the front foot so I think Ange has done a lot of good things this season so it shouldn't be just thrown out the window because of um a few bad moments and some worrying signs. No, I completely agree. The only the only caveat I would say to that is when we've had our fully fit team now for the last few weeks, especially in these games away from home against Fulham and Newcastle, the fact that we've looked as bad as we have has to be a concern. I don't even get away from that. But I think his overall point is 100% true. I think the, the overall picture is looking good at the moment. Um, I think, obviously, we're progressing well. We're in a good position in the table. So I think... Those those things are all true. There's no need to lose our heads. But I, I I don't think we can just gloss over the fact that we've got a full team at the moment and we got battered by a really depleted Newcastle team. I don't think you can just overlook that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. But you've got to look at like Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal. The year before they went on title challenges, I'm sure they had a number of embarrassing performances and worrying signs mm. and, and all these kind of things in the year before that they started challenging for the title as well. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Because look at the Arsenal when they finished fifth, right, when we pipped them to fourth. Quite a number of times that season, they were like, ah, nah, this Arsenal team, no chance are they, gonna, are they equipped to challenge for the title. Well, they lost, I remember, early in the season, they opening day, they lost 2-0 to Brentford, they lost 5-0 to City. I remember even in the run they lost that game against Newcastle where they fell apart in there, where it's 3-0 to top us. 3 nil to us. So they also had their moments in the next season. I even say when Pep, this year before they went, they had they were Centurions, they lost 4-0 to Everton, I remember, the year before. Yep. So uh, it happens, and you just got to ride, ride, that, ride that storm. Absolutely. Maddis THFC says Emerson is starting for us in the North London derby again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he's ready. Come on, Emerson. Uh, I, I hope he doesn't start, but if he does, he's going to be all for it. Is there anything creative we can do on right back? Maybe put Saar there or something? But Kulisevsky. Kulisevsky there. But I do think it is going to be Emerson. I, I thought he was... Uh, we didn't even rate him, did we? No. He actually, we probably should have because he actually came on quite early. Yeah, he did. He, um, he, was, he was actually our first sub. He was. Uh, I didn't think he was very good, but... 
he we didn't even we, we that's how forgettable he was <laughs> couldn't even remember he played um dan yidvid says that's two wins from last i suppose his last 10 away games not good enough and yeah we highlighted this in the review and the takeaways and it's completely spot on yeah but what as i say um as well um away form that's the hardest thing to get right because that's very very tricky um home home advantage is difficult to deal with and especially you're going to hard grounds like uh st james's park and newcastle have a great home record it's not going to be easy going there um you're not going to turn that up there and play your best football all the time but having you know having said that two wins away from home in the last 10 that, that can't be something that carries on for too much longer yeah SM says two weeks of no Tottenham. Look at this. Yeah. Meme. <laughs> and we are all for it. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, look, uh, it's not been the best recently, especially after yesterday. We could all do a break. The problem is, we had a two week break. I think Barnaby made this point. Are we the worst team when we've got a two week break coming up, honestly? Um, after the Fulham game, he was asked, oh, you know, um, do you, uh, do you, are you looking forward to that break or something? He said, oh, yeah, we're going to need it. Um, after how we played and then the same thing happens yesterday uh, yeah, yeah, exactly so that's got to be a concern yeah it is a concern what was our game after Fulham what was the game was I that think, Palace I uh, think we was it we beat Palace 3-1 was it um, it was Palace I think yeah we were we, um, or was it uh, Villa Fulham oh no Luton at home oh was it Luton oh, Villa was our, Fulham was after Villa and then Luton at home then West Ham, Forest, then right. Newcastle. Fair enough. Luca THFC saying, Ange says, all right, mates, let's win this game. We need some goals from you three. Do you understand? And this is what Werner, Son and Jonathan said. <laughs> <say. laughs> yeah, they, they were um, pretty ineffective, to be honest. Uh, probably, uh, well, I would never compare them to these three, but... It's hard not to when they put in the formal stages yesterday. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, Son seven underscore goat says Hyung Min, and this is Hyung Min. I think at full time whistle yesterday. Yeah, just, uh, at least he he came over to the fans, which is you know you know Sonny. He's always going to appreciate the fans. Left to the fans anyway. Yeah, well you know the fans are in the gods. You know, hard to see them um, a lot of the time. So fair play to Sonny, but a tough day yesterday. But yeah, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, teams in that situation, a lot of them just go straight down the tunnel, don't they? At least Sonny just shows it. You see Madison there holding his hands up like that. What an effort for the fans, though. Twelve thirty kickoff yeah. up at Newcastle. Difficult. Pff, and Paddy to see Power that says Big Dan Burn on Bentancourt in mm. his own box and VAR. Nah, nothing in it. That yeah, we didn't mention that in the review. That I don't know why that wasn't given a penalty. Yeah, I mean, it should have been given a penalty, but... It was weird. It was a 2-0. Two, two it was just for half time, wasn't it? Ben Tancourt gets Eric Byrne. Yeah. Byrne kicks him. Yeah. And you know what's the most frustrating thing? Madison did the same thing in the second half. And they gave him a yellow card <laughs> and a free kick. So I, I, I don't understand. That should have been a penalty. And you, was, know, you never know. Maybe it's 2-1. There was a couple one. of moments I questioned the ref yesterday being like, why is that not a booking? And then you book um, another player for something even less. I don't mm. understand it. There was a couple of weird moments from the referee yesterday but I don't think you can uh, say the result would have gone any other way well look you never know we, we get a goal we get a goal back in at 2-0 and maybe we're back in the game but um, but, but it was very very odd no obviously you can't blame that because we got absolutely battered on the day but it was you know at that moment, I think it was just after we scored the second goal, I think Vicario put that long ball forward and Ben Tenkel was through. He heads it, I think, did he head it past the keeper or there was a mistake? He gets to the ball first and Byrne takes him out. And the we don't VAR, get penalties. They don't VAR give didn't us look, penalties. VAR, they don't didn't give even us look at it. VAR, VAR. One penalty all season. I thought maybe it was outside the box. Maybe that's why VAR didn't give it. But then people are saying it was inside the box. So I don't understand why that wasn't given. Moonchild says, um, putting that shit on the Tottenham captain, may God strike you down. And this is in re reply to the Bleach Report saying, after getting thrashed by Newcastle, Tottenham's Champions League hopes will get boost boosted by Arsenal beating top four rivals Villa on Sunday and Arsenal beating Bayern in the Champions League to help England's coefficient in the fifth spot. Awkward. And um, look, I've said it many a time. I prefer Arsenal to drop than uh, Spurs to get Champions League for next season. So come on Villa today. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Massively. And come on Bayern as well. Don't care. It's going to be, as I said, it's going to take a lot more than a coefficient place for me to want Arsenal to win in the Champions League, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't think it will take anything. Like, what could it possibly 
take for you to want Arsenal to win in the Champions There's nothing in the world that can that can say, like, that will make you sway that decision. <laughs> yeah, nothing. True. Um, Ham Tottenham is replying to Spurs officials' a tweet um, saying Isaac scores to, um, yeah. Yeah, we all felt like that, I think, yesterday. I think we all needed a, um, a moment to ourselves. And next up, Kev saying, um, this is a quote from Ange, saying, that was a tough day, um, Ange, but apart from the 4-0 loss, I thought the boys played some really good stuff. Is that no, what he no. actually said? No, he's taking the piss out of the interviewer. No, you no, know, that's what I'm saying. Is that what the interviewer said? Or he's no, just he's, the taking, piss he's taking, because he always does that after like a defeat. Oh, even though it was a bad defeat, it was a good stuff. And then Ange gets really pissed off at him. Um, so I think he's just making I love Marzi, yeah. I love him. But he's not the greatest interviewer. Well, what I would say is Ange doesn't seem to like him. I think that's clear. But I've seen like even stuff like from James Madison seems to get the hump about stuff he asked as well. And it's just like, maybe mm. it's best just to keep Ben Haynes on these kind of things. Maybe. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it. But he, he definitely has like after a defeat. He like, uh, maybe, maybe it's because he's hired by the clubs. They're always trying to tell him to put a positive spin on it. Like try and get uh, something positive because after a bad defeat, they need something to hang on to. And uh, he, he always tries to like say like, oh, you know, it was a bad defeat. But we showed fight, didn't we, Ange? Yeah. And Ange's like, just go away. Like, oh, like, we were shit today. Well, he wants to say it, you can see it, but he like, he can't say it. Yeah. Harry Brooks replying to a tweet saying, why can't Son hold on to the ball? And he says, this isn't new. He's never been able to. His combination plays has always been below par and he's never been able to change pace of attacks. But it was a huge issue before because attacks rarely went through him. He was on the end of them. Now, far too many go through him. Yeah, and that's obviously... Um that's where two of the goals came from for Newcastle. Attack was going through Son and uh, he gave the ball away. That's absolutely right. So I do think uh, on, on occasions like uh, <laughs> yesterday, or well, maybe Son needs to stop coming deep and needs to be nearer to the box, but then someone has to be filling in that space somewhere, whether it be Madison or whoever it is. So that is definitely a problem and definitely did hurt us yesterday. It's not to say that you can't play up front, but yesterday it was de he definitely hindered us in that position I can't ignore that and um, there are some games where that can happen and it definitely did happen yesterday yeah Harry Brooks saying it's poor defending uh, but it comes from Son's really poor combination play edge of the box once again I'll say it until I'm blue in the face lack of 1v1 profile is not the biggest issue it's players who can't combine edge of the box to retain final third possession and open teams up yeah and that is also, that is also something that um that is also something that uh, that uh, we don't talk about enough, I think, and, and some, something we need because we talk about in that midfield. Obviously, we love Saar, Benton, all these players, but when we get into play, play a low block, right? We only, only it's only really Madison who's looking to combine, play little one twos, playing, trying to open teams up centrally. That's why I feel like sometimes we do need that extra like number ten, like with next to Madison sometimes and to really put pressure on the opposition. Sometimes we're just too easy to keep out because the wingers, they also don't like combining one, two. They like to go on the outside and put yeah. balls in. They don't like coming in. Decky's the only one who does like to do that. Um, but then he's not doing the winger stuff. So it's a it's a difficult balance at the moment. I've said it time and time again, though, like against low blocks, why not play a Kulisevsky or a Lo Celso alongside Madison in that middle of the park? Give mm, us that and I think it would threat. help. And the one time that we did do that at Villa at home, we looked so creative and so dangerous. Mm. So I don't understand why we haven't tried it since then. Yeah, and at the moment we just seem to lack ideas sometimes when we're trying to break teams down and we, we, we only have Madison to look at. Yeah. Nathan Clark says in the Fulham game we were limited by Dragushin discomfort on the left. Against West Ham we missed only Richarlison as a target in the box, but today we had all the necessary tools for the job, but we were simply outperformed tactically and individually by our opponents. Yeah, and that's and that's the concern, isn't it? That we that you can't give any sort of excuses as to why we weren't at our best. We had pretty much our best eleven and we were completely outclassed. And that's that's the biggest red flag, obviously. Yeah. Athletic says 95 seconds, Mickey van der Ven will not want to relive. And that was obviously the two goals where he slipped for. Um, yes, other players did uh, play him into trouble and, and left him with a thankless task to really recover that ball. But he does slip at the vital moments. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. It's un very unlike van der Ven. Um, someone said he was wearing sandals on the day. I, I wonder if he changed his boot to half time after those slips. But there were many players slipping, like a doggy was slipping as mm. well. Like there was something going on there. Maybe the Newcastle players had uh, extra long studs in their boots. They or watered something. the grass, the bastards. Yeah. 
Joe Tomlinson says, uh, well, he doesn't say anything. He just has a picture of Van der Ven ah, uh, with his does. face planted on the... On the everyone ground. wants a bit of a... Because he's had such a good season, so as soon as he has one bad game, everyone wants to pile in, don't they? And last but not least, Billy T says, favourite thing about watching Spurs is when we have the ball and it goes to a replay, and when the replay finishes, the other side are through on goal. <laughs> <laughs> that mystery of not knowing quite how we fucked it is uh, what keeps me alive. <laughs> That's exactly what happened with that opening goal. They were showing the replay of the first goal, and literally they cut back, it's like Gordon's about to shoot, and scores. what the hell just happened? Well, for God's sake, how many times that happened as a Spurs fan? So many. It's happened so many times, so many. honestly. Probably more than any other team Honor, in the history we must, of the We must League. have a record for most uh, goals scored while the replay of the first goal was bloody yeah. being shown, I bet you. Yeah, well, I guess that is it from us today. 